Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Nice seeing you all everyone and here is Asian News for today. The flooding across country caused by heavy rainfall in Japan. Heavy rainfall across Japan caused flooding in various prefectures. Local media reports a level 5 weather warning was issued to Unan City in western Japan, calling on residents to take emergency precautions. The Japan Meteorological Agency says that around 100 mm of rain fell in just a single hour in the area around the city. The weather agency also warns of possible landslides and that thunderstorms are forecasted from areas ranging from northern to western Japan. The last flooding was occurred on 3rd of July, was published by broadcaster NHK that at least two people have been killed and many others have been reported missing after heavy rains hit Japan's central city of Atami in Shizuoka, triggering landslides. Additionally, video clips posted on social media shows moments of raging water sweeping over Atami, destroying several houses along the way as some frightened onlookers ran for their lives. A Indonesian coffin marker exhausted after order increase every day. Olaskar Purva says his team worked hard even though they were exhausted in the workshop located in the Jakarta Cemetery to make the coffin because of the victims were increasing every day. Yeah. Before the cases spiked, we usually made only up to 10 coffins in one day, but now it has reached 30 orders per day and it's double the work. Indonesia is battling one of Asia's worst coronavirus epidemics fueled by the rapid spread of highly contagious Delta variant first identified in India. Authorities report 558 new deaths, a second wave of record fatalities, and 29,745 new infections, the tenth day of record high cases in the past 15 days. The health ministry says hospital bed occupancy was 75% nationwide as of July 2nd, but some hospitals on the most populous island of Java have reported over 90% capacity, including in the capital Jakarta. UN urges ASEAN countries to continue political dialogue with military junta. The United Nations top human rights official calls on ASEAN countries to launch a political dialogue with the military junta and the democratically elected leadership in Myanmar with support from the international community. The United Nations Human Rights Council's Michelle Bachelet in Geneva Forum says the Association of Southeast Asian Nations bloc agreed a five consensus in April, but unfortunately the Myanmar military leadership have shown little sign of abiding by it. I also think it is urgent for ASEAN to appoint a special envoy or team to get some kind of political dialogue underway. I encourage ASEAN to engage with the democratic leadership and civil society, not just the military authorities. While ASEAN's immediate focus has been on the humanitarian, I encourage ASEAN to address the human rights dimension as well, including by drawing on its own human rights institutions. Some kind of monitoring presence on the ground would help to build confidence and prevent further violence. My office stands ready to collaborate with and support ASEAN as we have done with regional mechanisms in other regions in response to urgent situations. It is very important for the international community to back ASEAN up with a united front. The Human Rights Council and General Assembly resolutions have been helpful in this regard, and I hope this can be reinforced in the Security Council. 
Of course, political dialogue also requires the release of political prisoners. The coup in Myanmar took place in February 1st, when State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi was arrested with another party member because of the military considers electoral fraud in the country. Indonesian government distribute oxygen to Jakarta hospitals and some residents by local oxygen supply after COVID-19 increases. The Indonesian government set up an oxygen distribution station in the capital of Jakarta to meet the demand from hospitals as local citizens buy up local oxygen supplies amid the surge in COVID-19 cases. Indonesia has one of Asia's most severe COVID-19 epidemics, exacerbated by the highly infectious Delta variant, with hospitals overstretched, oxygen supply problems, and a growing number of sick unable to receive medical attention. At least 200 oxygen cylinders are being distributed to Jakarta region hospitals by the government after prices at private oxygen retailers spiked to triple the usual rates. The spokesperson for the coordinating ministry in charge of COVID-19, Jody Mahardi, says the government will continue to ensure the supply of oxygen cylinders. They are targeting 100% of production of oxygen in Indonesia to be utilized for medical usage. Private retailers of oxygen cylinders said their supplies have also been affected recently as demand has soared. Outside his shop, a snacking queue for customers formed many desperate for oxygen supplies for their elderly relatives. Fatur Rahman was buying oxygen for his parents. I fear that we're facing an oxygen shortage, especially since this is for my parents. I hope the government won't be facing an oxygen shortage for the hospitals and for those who are doing self-isolation, and it will be great if the government can supply the medicine and oxygen for the people. Indonesia has been reporting more than 20,000 new cases and over 400 deaths per day over the past week, as the spread of the more contagious Delta variant accelerated infections and strained the country's healthcare sector. With a total of caseload of 2.28 million and that all over 60,500, the country is the worst affected by COVID-19 in Southeast Asia. Indonesia expands cemetery plots in Jakarta due to a spike in COVID-19 deaths. Drone footage shows workers and machines preparing burial plots over a large piece of land designated for COVID-19 victims in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta as a second wave of infections swept through the nation. Indonesia reports more than 1,000 coronavirus deaths in a day for the first time and a record 34,379 infections. The surge in infections overwhelmed parts of the hospital system in densely populated Java and with portable oxygen supplies running out in six towns. The spike in fatalities comes amid concerns about the new outbreak spreading across the archipelago, prompting authorities to monitor daily cases and bed occupancy in hospitals in 43 areas deemed red zones and urge strict implementation of mobility curbs. The world's fourth most populous nation has implemented its tightest restrictions so far on Java and Bali Islands after an exponential jump in COVID-19 cases fueled by the spread of highly contagious Delta variant. Myanmar will receive 2 million vaccine supplies after COVID-19 cases increase. Myanmar's military ruler says Russia had agreed to supply 2 million doses of coronavirus vaccine this month as the Southeast Asian country reported another record in COVID-19 cases and deaths. Ming Ohleng, who led February 1st coup against Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government, says the virus is spreading faster in Myanmar and that senior Russian defense officials tell him vaccines is on the way. 
Myanmar reports 4,320 cases, a record for a second successive day, and 63 deaths. Myanmar is in the midst of its most serious wave of infections to date, with efforts to manage the outbreak hampered by nationwide chaos in the wake of the military coup. Some health experts say Myanmar's real rate of infection is likely to be far higher given a collapse in testing since the coup and health workers joining strike in protest. Russia is among the few countries that have openly embraced a military government which has been condemned globally over the coup and the deadly crackdown on pro-democracy groups. Ming Oholeng says Myanmar desperately wants to make its own COVID-19 vaccine and Russia wants to cooperate and send a delegation to inspect its production plant during this month. Philippines activists mark court's anniversary with protests against Beijing. Hundred fifty activists protest outside a commercial building housing the Chinese embassy in Manila to mark the fifth anniversary of an international court ruling invalidating Chinese historical claims on the South China Sea. Activists hold anti-China placards and demand the Chinese government respect the arbitral award by allowing Filipino fishermen to fish freely in an area of South China Sea designated by Philippine government as the West Philippine Sea. Fisherman Bobby Roltan, 59, joined the protest in hopes of asking both the Philippines and China to respect Filipino fishermen and allow them to conduct their livelihoods in peace. On July 12, 2016, the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague ruled that China had no historic title over the South China Sea. It is also said China had interfered with traditional Philippine fishing rights at Scarabo Shoal and breached the Philippines' sovereign rights by exploring for oil and gas near the Reed Bank. Since winning the case in 2016, the Philippines has made little pushback against Beijing, with President Rodrigo Duterte criticized for his close ties to China and a lack of action to address the issue. Duterte has claimed his closeness to Beijing has helped fishermen fish in the disputed area again. <laughs> South Korea implements strict anti-coronavirus restrictions measures in Seoul metropolitan area. South Korea's government carries out its strictest anti-coronavirus restrictions to date under Level 4 in the Seoul metropolitan area to curb the spread of virus amid the fourth wave of COVID-19 pandemic. According to a report released from the country's health department that South Korea reports another 1,100 coronavirus cases. The rules in this restriction are only allow gatherings of two people after 6 p.m. with large-scale activities prohibited, public meeting service places are all prohibited or restricted for business, and bathing in indoor sports venues is also prohibited. The new restrictions cover the capital city Seoul, Gyeonggi province, Incheon city, and other regions surrounding the capital. The lifted anti-pandemic measures for those who have been vaccinated are also suspended under the new restrictions. According to the country's health department, the new measures will be implemented for two weeks according to the situation of the epidemic with the aim of lowering the level of anti-coronavirus restrictions. South Korea reported 1,378 more cases of COVID-19 last week, which is the highest number since South Korea first recorded COVID-19 cases within the country on January 20 last year. South Korea's Pandemic Prevention Department warns that if the situation continues to worsen, the number of new coronavirus cases confirmed in a single day may exceed 2,100 by the end of July. The country's government expects to vaccinate more than 70% of its population by the end of November. China continues to strengthen cooperation with Ukraine in the field of vaccines to support the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic.
Chinese President Xi Jinping says that China is ready to continue strengthening cooperation with Ukraine on vaccine and traditional Chinese medicine and help the country beat the COVID-19 pandemic. She makes the remarks in a telephone conversation with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Ever since China and Ukraine established their strategic partnership 10 years ago, bilateral ties have maintained a healthy and stable momentum in development and their cooperation in various areas has achieved positive results, bringing tangible benefits to the people of the two countries. He also says that the two countries have since last year joined hands in fighting against the COVID-19 pandemic and carried out cooperation on vaccine and other areas, deepening the friendship between the two peoples. The Chinese side is ready to work together with Ukraine to carry forward the traditional friendship, deepen mutual understanding, strengthen practical cooperation and take 30th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral ties next year as an opportunity to actively push forward China-Ukraine relations and help the two countries better achieve their respective development goals. She says the only way for the international community to perform well in humanity's arduous fight against the virus is through solidarity and cooperation. She adds the two sides should take high-quality joint construction of the Belt and Road as an opportunity to push forward cooperation on such projects as infrastructure and China-Europe freight train service, advance cooperation on agriculture products and expand people-to-people -people exchanges and cooperation. For his part, Zelensky notes that the Chinese side just celebrated the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China, saying that the Ukrainian side extended its congratulations and wishes greater achievements by the Chinese people under the CPC's leadership. In the face of the strike by the COVID-19 pandemic, the Chinese side has offered timely and pressure assistance to Ukraine, which has played an important role in helping Ukraine fight against the disease, and he hopes the two sides can strengthen cooperation on vaccines, medicine and other areas. Noting that the Ukrainian side attaches great importance and is dedicated to developing a closer Ukraine-China strategic partnership, Zelensky says Ukraine firmly adheres to the One China policy and is ready to take the 10th anniversary of the bilateral strategic partnership as well as the 30th anniversary of the establishment of the bilateral ties as an opportunity to promote exchanges and cooperation with China in various areas. A dinosaur cosplayer entertained people while waiting for the COVID-19 vaccine. Malaysian citizens waiting for their COVID-19 shot at vaccination center to watch their heads in case it was beaten off by Tyrannosaurus Rex lining up in the queue behind them. They didn't have to panic as it was just 39-year-old fitness instructor Kenny Sia who dressed up for appointment in full dinosaur costume, much to the amusement of people and medical workers at the vaccination center in Kuching, the capital of Malaysia's Sarawak state. Sia tells Reuters he chooses to wear costume to make people laugh as well as to protect himself. Yes, obviously, you know, I, I uh, yeah, like I said earlier, I want to protect myself with large crowds. Malaysia has vaccinated about 10% of its population, faster than most of its neighbors, though the number of reported infections remain high. The country reports 8,754 new cases, taking the total infections to 844,870, the third highest in the Southeast Asia, after Indonesia and the Philippines. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a lovely weekend.